you've been a listener of this podcast for a while, you'll know I'm a huge advocate for optimizing your health, for being your own healthcare advocate. I've been working on optimizing my health and fitness for over a decade. I've dramatically improved my strength and fitness. I've cleaned up my diet and improved my gut health. I've built healthy sleep routines and dramatically improved my sleep quality. I've worked on managing my stress levels through prayer, meditation, and journaling. And I've worked diligently on detoxing my environment, including my skin care and household cleaning products. And the results of all this work have been nothing short of miraculous. I've gone from being as sick and unhealthy as I've ever been in my life to being in the best shape of my life at age 58. But there's one area of my health that I've ignored, and that's my hearing health. I've had mild to moderate hearing loss most of my adult life, but in spite of my family's insistence, I've never addressed this important aspect of my health. There's a running joke in my family every birthday and Christmas that this is the year I'm getting a hearing aid. But why have I ignored this one area of my health? I mean, what's the big deal anyway? If you or a loved one has ever had a hard time with hearing, turn up the volume and tune into this episode. Hello and welcome to the Over 50 Health and Wellness Show. I'm your host, Kevin English. I'm the founder of The Silver Edge, and our mission is to help you build and maintain a lean, healthy body that you love for the rest of your life so you can show up in the second half of your life as the healthiest, strongest, most vital version of yourself. We have a great show for you today. James Gilchrist is here, and he's going to help us optimize our hearing health. But before we get to that, I want to let you know that this episode is brought to you by Living Libations. It is really hard to find truly organic and natural beauty products that don't contain harsh chemicals. Even products labeled organic or all natural often sneak in these harmful chemicals. But Living Libations has a line of pure and organic renegade beauty products that will make you look, feel, and smell your best without any of the harsh or harmful stuff found in almost all commercial beauty products. They have a full line of products for men and women that not only leave you clean, radiant, and smelling great, but here's the deal. All of their products actually heal and nurture your skin's natural microbiome. I personally switched over exclusively to their products over five years ago, and they are an important part of not just my hygiene care, but of my whole body wellness care. You can check out their full line of soaps, shampoos, cleansers, oral care, deodorant, natural makeup, and so much more. Just head over to silveredgepartners.com and click on the Living Libations icon, and you can save 10% off your order when you use the coupon code SILVEREDGE at checkout. Again, that's silveredgepartners.com. Use coupon code SILVEREDGE. That's Silver Edge all run together, no spaces. Okay, enough of that. Let's get on with today's show. My guest today is James Gilchrist. James is the CEO of Hear USA, which is one of America's largest hearing care retailers. Join us today as James discusses the widespread but often overlooked problem of hearing loss and why only one in five people with hearing loss actually take steps to correct this issue. I started our interview today by asking James how he ended up the CEO of a hearing loss company. For me, part of what makes me tick is being able to put my heart and soul into something that has a purpose bigger than myself. And I started my career actually in the United States Air Force. I was a hospital administrator in the Air Force, so the business side of running health systems. Then after the Air Force, spent some time in consulting, and that was the point where I really realized that for me, having that greater sense of purpose, being tied to something that was bigger than myself was critically important for me and my own personal passions. So I spent the last a decade or so in the vision industry that my last client was actually in the vision industry. And I took that opportunity to make the transition out of consulting into the vision industry. And I'm sure we'll talk a little bit about some of the corollaries between vision and, and hearing, but I had the opportunity just about a year and a half ago to join WS Audiology, join the hearing healthcare industry. And since that time of 
played a few different roles, but most recently, starting this past January, I had the opportunity to become the president of our U.S. hearing care retail businesses. And so that includes both our Hear USA business, as well as our sister company, My Hearing Centers here in the U.S. And for me, this was a great opportunity, again, to continue that, that passion of being able to help people while also building a business and really excited to, to be on this journey. But for me, I was in, like I said, in vision for the last 10 years, and I'm actually uncorrected from a vision perspective, but there was such power in seeing the impact that correcting someone's vision could have on their life, whether they were five or 55 or 105, being able to have those moments where you saw that the work you were putting in every day and that the team was putting in every day had a positive impact on those people's lives, but also those around them. And so being able to come to hearing for me is an extension of what I've already had the pleasure of being able to do, but now it's actually a more personal impact for me. So a little bit of background on, on me personally. So I have mild high frequency hearing loss, but it's hereditary. So I've gotten to see firsthand from my dad, my grandmother, both the impact of uncorrected hearing loss, but also the benefits of taking action, addressing hearing loss and the positive impact it can have not just on the individual family member or friend or colleague, but on those around them. It really is amazing to see that positive impact and how it expands beyond that individual person's life and to their whole community of people around them. Okay. So no, I love that you start by sharing that your passion for just helping and something greater than yourself. And so certainly those of us in the, in the service industry, or a lot of us anyway, right, right? I'm in the health and fitness, but the exact same thing, right? You're serving this higher purpose and there's this satisfaction of watching people transform. And for you, I guess that started maybe with uh, the vision and then you've carried that over into the hearing health space. Now, before we dive into talking about hearing loss and how we might correct that, what causes it, all that good stuff. You had mentioned hearing health. Let's start here. What is hearing health? Sure. So hearing health, the way I would consider the definition is similar. It might be easier even to use the corollary in vision. I think that's easier for people when you don't see it's directly impactful and you can't really live without it. Hearing people can put off for a lot longer. So sometimes just that definition of hearing health to your point can be a bit more nebulous, but think about it the same way you think about vision. And that if you aren't operating at your optimal, there's an impact on your health, but there's also a, an impact, not just on your hearing health, but on your whole health. The same way that vision or any other healthcare related activity could have a, both a positive impact or a negative impact on your life. So not addressing hearing health can have long-term impacts. Certainly it can lead to things like social isolation. So other comorbidities like dementia or other comorbidities can actually be exacerbated by uncorrected hearing loss. So hearing health is really the overall health of your hearing. So the same way you would think about, do I have 20-20 vision? You know, a lot of times they'll use an, actually a similar example in hearing and the hearing loss of getting beyond 20 as well. Certainly an opportunity for us to look at how can hearing health both play a role in benefiting not just your hearing health, but your overall health and well-being. And I'm sure we'll talk about that some more. Yeah, no, that's very interesting to me, just that impact of hearing loss into other areas of your life. I hadn't thought about it in terms of, you had mentioned a couple examples there, it's, I guess, positively or correlated with dementia and social isolation. And let's, I guess, before we dig into some more of those particulars, what are the causes of hearing loss? So my audience, obviously all over 50, is this something inevitable? Is this something that is, you had mentioned heredity earlier. What are there multiple causes? What, how do we end up in a place where we have hearing loss? Great question. So there, there are multiple reasons. Certainly hereditary factors can play a role, but it's part of the natural aging process as well. And that can be exacerbated by environmental conditions, your own her the hereditary factors that you inherit, but also could be on onset of other medical conditions that can exacerbate it. So it could be everything from exposure to one-time loud noise. It could be prolonged exposure to loud noises, or to your point, it could be just part of the aging process itself. And when you look at the, the older you get, the more likely you are to have a hearing loss and the progression of that hearing loss is also greater. So when you look at those that are 80 and above, you actually are more likely than not to have hearing loss and more likely than not to have a moderate plus hearing loss. Whereas when you're at 50, it's 
less likely for you to have it, but still, I think the numbers are three and five as you approach that age of Medicare, if you will, as a breaking point where you're going to have some level of hearing loss, whether it's mild or moderate plus. Okay. So we've talked about mild to moderate, and I guess it obviously could go into severe hearing loss. Is there a scale for this? Like you had mentioned 2020, I think most of my listeners are familiar with that in the vision space. How are we measuring hearing loss? And is there a scale of one to 10 or something along those lines for measuring hearing? There are. And generally the vernacular that you'll hear that's it's commonly used in the industry is mild to profound. So you can have mild loss, moderate loss, a severe or a profound loss. And each of those correlate to the level of hearing loss. And that could be across both of your ears, or it could be more severe in one ear than the other. So those are the typical terms that you'll hear. I know we'll talk some probably about OTC today that only pertains to a mild to slightly moderate loss, whereas prescriptive hearing aid devices are moderate plus. And even the type of device or the equipment that would be prescribed as a solution will vary based on your level of hearing loss. And so it's, that's one of the things that I've learned coming into this industry is I think we all think about a hearing aid and we think about what our grandparents were as a hearing aid. Certainly there's been massive improvements from a technological advancement perspective, but also there's so many different options. So being able to have that trusted partner with you on that journey, whether it's an audiologist or a dispenser is critically important because I'll use myself as an example. I knew very little about this space coming in and I've been blown away at not just the technological advances that have happened in recent years, but the amazing different options that are available to consumers and clients as they start that hearing healthcare journey. So critically important to your point on the level of hearing loss that you're partnering with a provider to be able to understand what does that mean for me and how how do I find the right solution that fits my hearing loss, but also my lifestyle and other needs that would be pertinent to that decision? Okay. Yeah. I, and this is a part, I want to pick this apart a little bit because this is something that I, as I was thinking about this interview, just my own preconceived notions around hearing and hearing loss. And I do have this sort of grandfatherly image of the person that wears a hearing aid. It's this, usually this big clunky thing over the ear. It's not very aesthetically attractive. And so there's this kind of this stigma, and at least in my mind, of a hearing aid wearing a hearing aid. And I just wanted to give you a chance to address that. You mentioned there's amazing technological advances. I can't imagine that we're far away from perhaps something that's completely invisible, maybe, or more aesthetically pleasing than a big giant thing that you loop over the back of your ear. Where are we in terms of devices and technology for the hearing aid market, basically? Stigma is the number one challenge, Kevin, in addressing hearing loss. And survey after survey has proved that certainly other factors can delay the decision to take action on hearing loss, like price and availability and accessibility. But survey after survey tells us that stigma is the number one challenge for people actually taking action. And, and the data proves that only one in five Americans with hearing loss take action to get it correct. That's staggering when you think about the unintended consequences of uncorrected hearing loss. I'll share even a personal story of mine. My, as I shared, my hearing loss is largely hereditary. My dad should have been wearing hearing aids since the time I was an infant. He tried multiple times and always quit uh, and he'll never admit this, but certainly I know that knowing him stigma was a driving factor. And actually the example you just gave, I think was a large part of that. His mother, my grandmother also had hearing loss. She had hearing aids. She never wore them and she died from complications from dementia, which now we know from the science, uncorrected hearing loss can play a contributing factor to that. So in my dad's mind, part of the reason I believe that he didn't stick with the hearing solution that was prescribed to him was in his mind, that's what he saw his, his elderly mother really not in a good mental health state, fast declining health. And he remembers also to your point, the way that hearing aids used to look these big clunky device on the back of, of her ear. And so for him, that was the stigma that he thought of when he was making the decision. Do I stick with what was re recommended to me? I'll tell you, I wish he would have started earlier. There are so many moments that he missed out on in our family that now he gets to participate in. And part of the reason I believe that he actually made the leap to, to wear his hearing aids full time, it wasn't because my mom or my brothers or I nagged him enough. Sometimes there's no level of nagging that convinces somebody now is the time, but it was 
the technological advancements that have really in the last 10 years or so come an amazing way. And it's not just about the advancements on the audiological side. Certainly there's been amazing advancements in the audiological capabilities of hearing aids, but it, many of the non-audiological features and benefits that now exist in hearing aids make them more approachable and help to reduce that stigma. So what it was for my dad and was, and I'm holding up my phone. I know your listeners can't see this, but it, for him, it was the ability to connect to a smartphone. And I still remember, I called him, he was out at our family lake house. And you know, when you can hear someone smiling, I could literally hear my dad smiling as he proceeds to tell me that he has these new hearing aids and that they connect to his smartphone and, and go through this long list of things that now he can do because he has these hearing aids. So that one little feature and benefit was the difference for him. They weren't much better than the last version of hearing aids that the audiologist had prescribed to him. But this was the moment that for him broke down the stigma because it, it turned a hearing aid from being a device that was focused on addressing a disability to a device that helped not only empower him in his hearing health journey, but it was a toy. And so now when his friends saw hearing aids on him, which I'll come back to discreteness in a moment, it was something that he was proud of where he got to take out his phone or talk about the ways that he was able to use his hearing aids as a tool to live life uh, more fully. And for me, that's the power of the advancements. What we've seen in the last 10 years is I believe we are at that cusp. I saw it in the vision industry where when I was a kid, kids would get beat up for wearing glasses. Think about it. Now we have people walking around with Plano lenses where there's no prescription at all because it's a fashion statement. Uh, you know, I think we're probably a ways off from hearing aids being a fashion statement, but I certainly believe that we're on that cusp where hearing aids can become a, an empowering device, not a stigma oriented device. And lots of, of evolution currently happening around how a device looks. And so I'll give you two quick examples. Certainly there's discreteness in the size of the hearing aid. So there are many hearing aids today that we would call a completely in the canal or a CIC, where it goes all the way in your canal and it is very difficult to see that hearing aid. Even what we would call a receiver in canal where the traditional kind where it goes behind your ear, those are much smaller than they've ever been. And as I alluded to earlier, they don't, now they have capabilities that even when you do see it can help reduce the stigma because connectivity from a Bluetooth perspective, other new features and benefits that are non-audiological. But where I get excited too, is where we see the merge of hearables, so earbuds and hearing aids. And we actually are our sister company. We're part of WS Audiology here at, at Hear USA. And one of our sister companies, Signia, released a device about a year and a half ago that looks just like an earbud. In fact, it's substantially smaller in my ear than my Samsung Galaxy Buds. And I love to say that those are the most discreet hearing aids because they're hiding in plain sight. If I walked by on the street, you would think that I have a really cool new earbud when in fact, I actually keep it with me to address my mild hearing loss. I really struggle with hearing and noise. So it has a rechargeable case. I keep it in my pocket, just like my Galaxy earbuds. But when I'm at a cocktail hour or a meeting or at a restaurant with a lot of ambient noise and echo, that's what I pull out of my pocket to be able to help me and empower me to live my life to the fullest. And I think those are the advancements that I see that are going to really make hearing aids way more approachable than they've ever been in the past. Okay. Now you just said something really interesting there at the end that I find fascinating. You said that you pull yours out at say, let's say a restaurant or the, where there's a lot of noise and it's difficult to hear. And that's quite similar to somebody who might pull out reach for their readers, right? To look at a menu in a dimly lit, lit restaurant. So you're using those just as opposed to just having them on all the time, you're using them as needed. Is that right? That's it. That's absolutely right. And so if you have a moderate plus loss, you should certainly be wearing your hearing aids near full time. It helps you adapt to wearing your hearing aids. It also helps with stimulation of your hearing so that you don't, it doesn't progress further or it slows down the progression, I should say. But for me, I have a very mild loss and where I specifically struggle is in noise. And so if you go to your local audiologist, come to a Hear USA location, what we can do, what our audiologists and our dispensers can do is test your hearing, to not only understand where your hearing loss is from an audiogram perspective, but also to test what, how do your, does your hearing respond in noise? And for me specifically, that's where my hearing loss is beyond what you would see in an audiogram. And so for me, I don't need hearing aids full time, but 
If you've ever been, if you have a mild loss like me and you've ever gotten through a restaurant, a meeting, where at the end of it, you are physically exhausted, not because you didn't enjoy your company, but because you were straining to hear, yeah. that's the difference for me that it makes. It not only helps me with being able to hear folks, but it helps keep my energy levels up. It helps me be a more active participant in the conversation because I'm not straining and exerting all of my effort just to try to hear somebody. And actually for me, I can share with you, the moment that I made the decision to start wearing hearing aids on those occasions was I was at a team meeting. I had a responsibility previously for our Department of Veterans Affairs team. And one of our team members has a severe hearing loss. He has since he was a child and he was fit with one of our sister company's latest devices. It's called the X platform. And part of what it does is it has two processors and it is revolutionary in that it, it processes separately the surround. So all of the noise around you and then your focus sound. So typically you and I having a conversation face to face. And this gentleman on our team was the only person in this crowded, noisy restaurant with rain coming down in the background that was sitting back in his seat, having a casual conversation. All of us with either normal or very mild hearing loss, we're all leaning in, really struggling. And I realized, okay, if he can do it, certainly with my mild loss, I can be in a better position than, than I currently am. And so you're absolutely right. I think that's part of what the onsite even of OTC now can provide to people is to make it more approachable, certainly from an affordability perspective, but also to have it, if you're not struggling in every circumstance, to have that occasional hearing aid that might've been either out of reach from a price point perspective or from a stigma perspective. And I think both of those barriers are being addressed as we make technological advancements and regulatory advancements at the same time. Fantastic. And I just want to clarify when you say OTC, I'm assuming you mean over the counter, right? So this is something yes, thank that you. we can now get over the counter. Yeah. And we'll, I, we'll come back to that because I do want to talk about, I believe there were some recent regulation changes there, but I, I need to come clean here and talk about my own hearing journey a little bit since you've shared yours. And I hope my wife doesn't listen to this episode because I'm in trouble if she does. So for years, the she's been saying, I'm going to get you a... Well, I don't want to portray her that way. But she's been saying, I'm Please going don't. to get you a hearing aid. Right? Get, that's what you're getting for your birthday. That's what you're getting for Father's Day. You've got Christmas coming up. That's what you're getting for Christmas. And I know I'm not going to wear one of those. Gosh, this is probably 10 years ago. So she actually sent me to the doctor, go get your hearing checked, go get your hearing checked. And now that we're having this conversation, I realize that most of where this occurs is when we're at a party, when we're at dinner, when we're in a crowded, somewhat noisy environment. My wife will often, she'll elbow me. He's talking to you. I completely missed it. So I go dutifully off to the doctor and the doctor's actually a little bit humorous. He says, if you knew how many men come in here, because their wives send them, right? But I did have some mild hearing loss and she was very vindicated. Said, okay, well, are you going to get your hearing aid? And I said, no, I'm not. I think I can hear just fine. It's just mild. What's the big deal? And so here I am years later and I'm getting ready to prepare for this interview. I went on your website doing a little bit of research and lo and behold, you actually have a hearing test right there on your website that I got to say is very slick. I took that test. And of course, as you might imagine, you have the significant <laughs> loss, the loss and the good about in the middle of the loss and the one ear is worse than the other. And never occurred to me that one of my options might be that when I'm in that particularly noisy environment where it is difficult for me to hear, I could pull something discreet, not crazy out, put them in my and enhance that experience, as you're saying, as, as opposed to treating it or viewing it as that disability, like you're saying. And for me, it's just, I just, again, it goes back to that archetype of that old man going, what? Speak in my good ear, Sonny. Exactly. I, that's not what I really am looking to portray aesthetically, right? So that's my story here. And the I think there's something in there that we can all learn from. And that's, I didn't notice that I had hearing loss. I didn't think I had hearing loss but it was my wife. So what are the signs of hearing loss? And is it typically, unless it's acute, I'm guessing it doesn't occur to the user really, but probably more likely loved ones around them. Is that fair? No, that's very fair. I mean, actually your story is very typical of what we see every day. And I'll maybe just start with, you know, I want to make sure we don't get in trouble. Our wives are always right. I want that to be on. <laughs> okay, fair. My dad taught me something when I was young. He said, your mother may not always be right, but she's never wrong. And so that's, those are w words of wisdom that I like to live by. <laughs> Wise man. Yes. But your, no, your experience is exactly like what we see every day because you're living it day in and day out. You're not going to notice 
your slow progression of hearing loss. But those around you certainly will. And it, whether it's your spouse, a significant other, a folks at work, your colleague, your sons or daughters, uh, often are, are some of the first folks to see. That is often the action item or spur that creates action. And typically, and so your experience is not far from what we see in data either. The typical uh, person with hearing loss waits seven years on average to actually seek out a solution. And so your experience is actually very typical to what we see every day. And I think that's the opportunity is to create a bigger conversation about hearing health to make sure that people feel empowered. You think about where we are as Americans today, we're, we have taken charge of our healthcare in a way that I've never seen in my lifetime. Whether it is, yes, your general health, but also your visual, your audiological health, we are leaning as consumers of healthcare in a way that I've never seen. Now, probably a lot of doctors out there listening are saying, yeah, you're too empowered. You're looking up things on Google and stop coming in and telling me what's wrong with you. <laughs> but we are, we're, as a society, we are taking control of our healthcare in a way that we never have. And I feel like hearing care is maybe lagging a bit behind from other medical specialties, but we're right on that cusp. And I think now's that time for us to create a bigger conversation about not just hearing health, but how hearing health can play a role in impacting your overall health. And just one more thing I'd highlight in what you said, there was a commercial that I loved that was in Europe. My wife and I lived in Europe when we served in the Air Force and it played in, I believe it was in Ireland. But the commercial said something that really resonated with me. And it said, people don't notice your hearing aids. They notice your hearing loss. And that to me was a really impactful moment when I went back and watched that commercial now that I'm in my current role, because it's absolutely right. Hearing aids today are so discreet. People largely don't notice your hearing aids, but they absolutely notice your uncorrected hearing loss. And I think that's a reminder for us to say, where are our priorities in addressing it? Have we taken the right action? Have we listened, in your case, have we listened to our wives? And I think it's, a, it's something that as a society, as we, take, as we take that journey of being more empowered on our healthcare journey, we can keep that in the back of our mind that yes, this is, an, this is a device that helps empower me, that allows me to live my life to the fullest, it's not a device that is holding me back from anything. Yeah, no, that's very well spoken. And I'm adding to your statistics of the people that wait seven years to take, I think you said only one in five people that have hearing loss actually do something about it, which if you, if people that are listening to this and have followed this podcast for a while know that I'm very big about optimizing, not just being healthy, but really optimizing your health and being empowered to take control over your health and your well-being and, and focusing on what you can control and being your own healthcare advocate, all things that you're just talking about. And yet it occurs to me when it comes to this one area of my life, I certainly have not been a good sample of that, perhaps. We um, can certainly so partner with you and get you seen. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, I think I'm in trouble. I might be getting here. This might be the Christmas I get my hearing aid for Christmas here. All right. When we talk about hearing loss, and let's just leave, I suppose, disease or like these acute causes of sudden hearing loss, but just this more, I suppose, more typical gradual onset. When does that, is there an age where that typically starts? Do people start seeing that more in midlife or later life? Is, and is, are there trends in that we see when we start measuring hearing loss in people in large populations? Absolutely. So when we're talking specifically about age-related hearing, you're absolutely right that the older you are, the more likely you are to have hearing loss. And then depending on whether or not you've taken action to correct your hearing loss, that also can delay or slow down the speed at which your hearing loss progresses. And so it is important, we talked about this earlier, that typically folks wait seven years or longer. It's not just important to ensure you don't miss on, out on those great moments with your family or being able to be engaged at work. It's critically important to start that journey soon because you can, similar to uncorrected vision, if you don't exercise those muscles, you can actually have progression accelerate or said differently, maybe put a positive spin on it. If you take action, you can absolutely slow down the progression of hearing loss. And so that's that opportunity. And what is recommended is that for anyone that even doesn't have hearing loss or doesn't have concerns about their hearing loss, that you're checked every three years. But if you do have concerns about your hearing loss to first immediately take action and go in and get it checked, but then it is recommended similar to an eye exam or a dental exam to have that checked every year, the same way that you would go into your PCP or your dentist or your optometrist, 
It should be a part of your regular health routine on an annual basis. Yeah, that's a good point. That's, I get a physical every year. I get my eyes checked every year, a dentist twice a year, all these things, all these boxes checked. And the only time I've ever had my hearing checked was when my wife insisted that I go in because she was convinced I was going deaf. But I hadn't thought about the fact that this, that not taking action certainly is not improving my hearing in any way. And in fact, could be detrimental as it just continues to deteriorate, which leads me to the question, are there things that we can do to naturally improve or restore our hearing? Are there lifestyle changes we can make or what's available to us from more of a natural lifestyle type thing that we can do? Or are there things that we can do? Uh, absolutely. So first the thing I want to address though is how do you start that journey? And so I think you were absolutely right. It's first about taking action. You mentioned earlier, but on our website at hearusa.com, we do have a hearing screening. It's not a full comprehensive evaluation, but it at least can be a first step on that journey for you to understand where are you on your hearing health journey. For a more comprehensive evaluation, our locations actually provide uh, complimentary evaluations. So you can come in, no risk, no pressure and be able to start that journey. And then our audiologists and our licensed dispensers will be able to have a conversation with you, not just about hearing aids potentially as a solution, but overall, what are the things that you need to evaluate within your life? And even just as we're sitting here having this conversation, I'm wearing earbuds. One of the very practical things is how loud do you allow your hearing buds to, to be? We are much more exposed to noise than we ever have been in the history of mankind. And we don't often think about it because it's become a way of life. Actually, my, you know, I was with my son earlier today and he had his headphones on watching his tablet. And now that I'm in the industry, I'm paying attention to these things. And so just even for your kids, there are headphones now that they make specifically for kids that only go up to a certain decibel level to protect their hearing. Certainly hearing protection is, a, is another factor. I love working out in the yard and I'd say before I was in this industry, probably didn't do the things that I should. I was in the vision industry, so I was wearing eye protection. But if I'm using a chainsaw or a lawnmower, those are all loud enough to where over time, especially, it can progress hearing loss. And so it's little environmental factors, factors around your own lifestyle and choices that you can make, protection methods that you can employ, all of those things are, are things that, especially an audiologist or a licensed dispenser can have a conversation with you about things that you need to do to both correct your hearing loss, but also prevent further progression of hearing loss. Okay. So yeah, you had mentioned hearing protection and certainly we see that in, in loud, noisy environments, typically if people work in those environments. But to your point, most of us have headbuds or headphones, earbuds or headphones. We may be listening to music very loud when you're certainly at a, say, a a music concert. I've been in some really loud environments. You might be right up against the speakers if you're up front. That can't be good for our long-term hearing health, can it? It's certainly not. But those are the things that, honestly, because we haven't had those types of conversations often enough as an industry and as a society, we're walking past those opportunities to really take control of our hearing health and not just control our hearing health and delay or mitigate some of the progression of hearing loss, but as we talked about earlier, Uncorrected hearing loss can have other ramifications on your overall health, your overall well-being. It can lead to social isolation. As a veteran myself, you know, one of the things that I'm very passionate about is veteran health care. And we see within the veteran community, the incident rate of suicides being very high. It's also very high in the incident rate of hearing loss and tinnitus, which is ringing in the ears. All of these things, while certainly you can't say one causes the other, there is a strong correlation and one can exacerbate the other. And so there's all of these opportunities that we have as an industry, as a society to destigmatize hearing loss, to focus on empowering ourselves and each other to start that journey. And I think we are, we're at that cusp as a society and as an industry to truly look at things in a different way. Like we talked about earlier, like what we saw with vision, where now wearing glasses is cool. Yeah, I, I think you got a long you got a long ways to go to make hearing aids cool, but <laughs> more power to you. I, I'm definitely in your corner because they they're probably in my future. And like I said, I, I I'll be the first to admit the reason I really haven't pursued it is because I just I don't want to. I don't. I've got this stigma to it. And you're talking about 
overcoming this stigma. And certainly for a company like you, right, where you have a commercial interest in people wearing hearing aids, right, or corrective hearing, as well as obviously, I don't want to, I don't want to short sell you on the meaningful impact you make in creating better human experiences by improving hearing health. But you're also, let's face it, you are financially tied to people moving that direction. So destigmatizing this can help on a number of fronts from the business front, clearly the dollars and cents, but also just for the human experience and for people like me that are just you got this stigma. My dad's the same way. He's 80 something years old and he's had a couple of them. He won't wear them. I don't want to wear those damn things. And it's just, meanwhile, people are going, dad. And now that's, I'm becoming that myself. I hear my kids saying the same thing or my wife, Hey, he's talking to you. So I, you had, I wanted to back up a little bit because you had mentioned ringing in the ears. And I know that's a thing. Fortunately, it's not something that I've struggled with, but is that related to hearing loss? Certainly has to be related to hearing health. And you had called it, I think, tinnitus. What is that? And is that, how is that treated? So we always get questions. Is it tinnitus or tinnitus? It's either, or you choose. (laughs) So we'll put that out there first, but it can, it is related to hearing health. Of course it can, or it may or may not be related to hearing loss. Uh, and again, your audiologist, your, your licensed hearing aid dispenser, the best resource that you can go to help understand the causes and the relation between tinnitus and hearing loss. That being said, there are therapies uh, related to tinnitus that can help. Some of them are tied to hearing devices like hearing aids. Others are therapies that would go outside of actual uh, devices and you know, things, everything from white noise. There's other therapies that are built into to hearing aids where it uses different noise profiles, sound profiles to be able to essentially equalize or offset that ringing in the ears. Uh, so there's a number of different therapies that are available. And again, starting that journey, uh, talking to an audiologist or a licensed dispenser is the best place to, to go. And you know, I, I do want to circle back real quick to your comment earlier about you know, the business aspects and the doing good and purpose aspects. That's why I love being a part of this company in this industry. You don't have to choose. Doing well for your clients, your patients, also leads to better business results. And actually at Here USA, I'll just share that one of the things, one of the evolutions that we've been on is really making sure that we're clear on our why. What's our ambition? What's our purpose as an organization? We had 28 different brands that had grown through acquisition. We brought that whole team together this year. And it was really important for me to ensure that we were all clear on why do we exist as a company? And for us, our ambition is to change 1 million more lives by 20, by the end of 2028. And again, to your point, there's business aspects that relate to that, but because we are a purpose-driven industry and a purpose-driven company, my team, that's what they wake up every day thinking about. Certainly they think about sales and how do we run the business, but what they're thinking about disproportionately, and they should be, is that client that's right there in front of them or the spouse or significant other that's with them that's saying, hey, now's the time that you need to start this journey. That's what makes them tick. And so that's what we've really been focusing on as an organization is how do we ensure that our team members are equipped to help our clients be empowered in this hearing healthcare journey? Because again, if we hit our ambition, the business results take care of themselves. Uh, That's part of the beauty of this industry. It is a virtuous cycle, if you will. Yeah, no, I love that idea of a virtuous cycle. I love the idea of empowering people in their hearing health journey. All that lands very well with me. With I'm trying to do the exact same thing from just this holistic, healthy aging perspective. I'm also railing against the, a very common narrative of, hey, it's all downhill from here, or that's just how it is. I'm sure that probably lands with you as well in your space. Now, <clears throat> James, as we're wrapping up here a little bit, let's spend a couple of minutes maybe speculating about the future of the technology in your space. Technology is just going crazy, just exponentially growing. What do you see in this, in your space, specifically the hearing aid, hearing help space? What might that technology look like in the near future, say the next couple of years and maybe 10, 20 years out? uh, Do you see a time when maybe these are embedded in our brain or we (laughs) have different kinds of, we're more like cyborgs? What does the future hold technology wise? And I'm just asking you to speculate, not say anything specific, but what do you see in the future? Happy to speculate. And I think it actually ties to the comment you were just making about being empowered and not seeing aging as a negative thing. But the example I like to give is I like people to visualize what, think about your grandparents when they were 70, think about your parents at 70, think about 
you either at 70 or when you will be 70, think about how different lifestyles are. I remember with my grandparents at the age of 70, they were largely sitting on the sofa in front of TV, watching reruns of the Three Stooges. My, my parents, when, when they entered their 70s, they were traveling, incredibly active, very different lifestyles with their grandkids, my kids, they're on the floor playing with them. Things that I didn't see from my grandparents when they were in their 70s. Think about us when we're either now in our 70s or as we get into our older years, totally different. The lifestyle needs and are evolving because of the way that we're living life. We're living longer, we're living more fuller, uh, more full lives. And I think that is what I would expect our devices to mirror. I would expect that as an industry, we will bridge some of the gap between hearing loss, hearing health, and your overall health and well-being. And I'll just give a couple of examples of what's already out there within our space. I mentioned earlier, from a form factor perspective, the way that hearing aids look, you're seeing this convergence between hearables or, or earbuds or those sorts of things up from a consumer electronic perspective and hearing aids. So the one that we have within our sister company, Signia is called Active. It, you would not be able to tell in my ear whether I'm wearing a hearing aid or an earbud. You would not be able to tell. We also have made great advancements in some of the non-audiological features. So I mentioned earlier, streaming and connectivity. Rechargeability is another great example. The Active Pro device that I was just describing, not only is an earbud, but it travels in a recharging case, just I, just I would expect out of earbuds and it streams to my phone, just like I would expect out of earbuds. And so it's not about just making hearing aids more approachable, but I think it's that convergence between addressing hearing loss and empowering us in the way that we live life every day that I think will be part of the future. Now, whether or not it'll be embedded in our brains, I won't speculate on, <laughs> on that, but certainly I think hearing aids will become more integrated into the way that we live our lives. Another great example would be features that sit outside of the hearing devices themselves. So apps as a great example, the most recent release to one of the apps within one of our sister companies actually has things that you would expect to see from health tracking devices like a Fitbit or something along those lines. So it tracks your steps. It can track other things. Think about a hearing aid, especially for someone that has a moderate plus loss. It's probably one of the few devices that they might be wearing near full time that can give great insights into their overall health and well-being. So that's where I see our category moving and evolving is it to, is the category, yes, to from a look and feel perspective to break down the stigma. Certainly we'll continue to see massive advancements in, on the audiological side of things. But I also think the convergence of the hearing, health, and your general lifestyle needs will be one of the areas that we will see continued transformation as we move forward. I think that will be great for society because that will Th those types of moves will be what truly break through, like the example with my dad, where it went from being a stigmatized medical device to being something that he was proud to show his friends and excited to be able to show off a little bit. And I think that's where we're going to see really some amazing things happen and people feeling more empowered to, to take that hearing health journey. All right. Certainly, I'm excited about that, all of that, as I'm on my own hearing health journey. But before we go, one thing I did want to come back to, we had just briefly glossed over this earlier. You had mentioned the OTC devices, right? The over-the-counter devices. So here, I think that hearing aids once upon a time were just a prescription thing, right? You had to go to a doctor, get diagnosed, and you got a prescription for a hearing aid. And now I believe that earlier this year, the FDA has deregulated some of that. Now, if you just have the moderate, maybe the light to moderate, you can find over the counter. So in terms of accessibility, it sounds like these devices are becoming more easily accessible and easy to get your hands on. Is that fair? Yeah, that's a fair statement. So it was mid-October when the regulations went into place officially and the sale of OTC devices came into fruition in the US. And I'll just maybe start by saying there is going to be, there is a range of OTC devices very basic devices to very technologically advanced devices. And so it is important that if you're going to take that step, that you understand not just what's available from an OTC perspective, but also whether or not you are a candidate for OTC. So OTC is yes, certainly the first thing that you need to understand is what level of hearing loss do you have? Is it mild to moderate? And the way that the regulation actually states is perceived mild to moderate loss. And I think the word perceived is an important mm -hmm element to consider because you know much like you or I we didn't hear 
or we didn't, because we're in our hearing loss journey, we don't see that progression. So you may actually have a more severe loss than you perceive. So getting an understanding of where you are on that hearing loss journey and the, your hearing health journey is a critical first step. But then there's also some other disqualifying factors. If you have asymmetric hearing loss in your two ears, not a good candidate for OTC. If you have tinnitus, you're probably not a good candidate for OTC devices. If you're below the age of 18, not a good candidate or not a candidate for OTC devices. Certainly it's made it more accessible, but this is a category that a lot of us don't spend a lot of time understanding or have deep knowledge of. So educating yourself is the first thing that I would recommend to your listeners. Take an active role in educating yourself. Again, I mentioned earlier, but at Hear USA, we have complimentary hearing health evaluations. We'd be happy to partner with you on that journey and help understand if OTC is the right path. Of course, we'll recommend that. If a prescriptive hearing aid is the right path, we can help you on that journey as well. But to come back to your original question, absolutely, OTC devices will provide another avenue for folks to start their hearing health journey. It should create an avenue that is a more accessible, more approachable. Hearing care professionals not required in that journey, but there's certainly, as I alluded to previously, the reasons why you would want to partner with it, a hearing health care provider, especially if you can start that journey in a way that isn't cost prohibitive, I would highly recommend it. But it also helps with the stigma and the overall conversation about hearing health. So just since OTC regulations were passed, the number of conversations, actually our conversation here is a great example. Because of OTC devices now being a regulated FDA category, it's created a lot of, not just about OTC devices, but also about hearing health in general. So this is an opportunity for us as an industry, as a society, to raise awareness overall about hearing health. It's also, I believe, going to help reduce the stigma because you have big players entering the market. And I'll use the example, our sister company, our parent company, I should say, WS Audiology signed a partnership agreement with Sony. So you think about you know, one of the biggest brands in consumer electronics is now a partner of ours. And we believe that's going to be a big step in, in helping to make hearing loss and hearing health and hearing devices more approachable when you have a big name like Sony coming into the space and making it more approachable, more relevant, and helping us to really understand how do we destigmatize these devices in a meaningful way. Really excited to see all of these advancements from an OTC perspective and how it can lift the category from an awareness perspective and help people maybe start their journey a little bit sooner. And that's our hope is that OTC devices expand the category because it helps to make it a little bit easier for those folks that might've been in that bucket that are delaying seven years on average before they start their journey. Yeah, I'm a little over seven years on delaying my journey. <laughs> so yeah, folks, if you see me out at dinner or at uh, at my next nutrition conference and I look like I'm wearing earbuds, I probably have succumbed and, and have gotten some hearing correction devices. James, before we go here, how can people, that let's say people are listening to this and they got it turned up really loud because their hearing's starting to go, how can they get in contact with you? How can they connect with you folks? Well, the easiest way is to go to our website, hearusa.com. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we've been on a journey bringing all of our brands together. So now we have a national network under Hear USA, 360 locations across the US. Happy, eager to be able to partner with your listeners on their hearing health journey. Uh, you can also, you'll see on the website, our phone number, both to our individual hearing centers, but also to our central call center. Please reach out. Again, you mentioned earlier, but I'll highlight again, we have a hearing screening on our website. So if you want to get a little bit more information before reading out, reaching out, you can take that online screening. We also have a number of educational resources that can help people to feel empowered. Again, this is a category that most of us know very little about. And so our focus is about ensuring that all of our clients feel educated and empowered as a partnership in this journey. And so that's the, what I would encourage your listeners to do is to be able to take that next step, be able to start educating themselves. And then, as I mentioned earlier, we offer complimentary hearing evaluations where we can partner with you, our audiologists and our licensed dispensers on that hearing health journey to help you understand how has your hearing loss progressed? What are the right solutions for you? And they're going to really dive in to help understand what are your needs so that they can make a custom recommendation for you as you start that journey. Fantastic. And folks, I will drop that web URL as well as their social information into the show notes. And you guys can find that there. James, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show today and sharing not just your wisdom and your knowledge, but clearly your passion with us as well about hearing health. I think this is an area certainly 
Obviously, I personally neglected this, but I think it just gets overlooked for a number of the social reasons that we've discussed here, right? And I hope that this helps bring some awareness to folks. So I wish you all the best in all your future endeavors. Well, thank you, Kevin. I just want to close by saying I appreciate the opportunity to have the conversation. Again, I think it's conversations like these that will help to raise the awareness. And I just want to thank you for what you're doing. To, to really focusing on empowering your audience to take control of their health. That's certainly something that is a passion that you and I both share. So really appreciate the opportunity and hope to be able to have a, another conversation in the future. Okay, that's our show for today, folks. Again, I'll put links to everything we talked about in the show notes, and you can find that over at silveredgefitness.com slash episode 158. If you've enjoyed this podcast, I want to let you know that we have other free resources over at silveredgefree.com. There you'll find free guides with our top tips on nutrition, exercise, and healthy lifestyle to assist you in your weight loss and fitness journey. So feel free to head over there and download anything that looks useful to you. As we wrap up our time together today, you can show your support for this show in two important ways. One is to tell a friend about this podcast and encourage them to give it a listen. The second is for you YouTube folks to click the like and subscribe buttons and for you podcast folks to give this podcast a five-star review on whatever platform you listen to podcasts on and be sure to subscribe and follow so you don't miss future episodes. I really appreciate you spending your time with me today and until next time, stay strong. Thank you.